This week for Tactical Tuesday, we're gonna go over our plate carrier setups. Hey guys, welcome back. So this week for Tactical Tuesday, we wanted to do something a little bit different. We wanted to take a couple minutes and discuss our plate carrier and gear setup. Uh, we get often asked a lot as salesmen, you know, first off, if we carry this type of equipment and, you know, how we set our equipment up. There's a lot of people out there who have, you know, questions who are new to this kind of tactical equipment world. And unfortunately, even though we don't necessarily sell the, the plate carriers here at the moment, uh, we wanted to share with you guys how we have set our gear up, um, especially kind of coming from two very different backgrounds. Me being on the civilian side of things, I've done a couple competitions that involve you know, wearing a plate carrier. David has more of that military background. And so we wanted to kind of just take a couple minutes, have an open discussion about what we have going on with our plate carriers, um, kind of the philosophy behind the items that we have chosen to put on these things, and a little bit about the particular piece of equipment that we have here. Um, so I'm going to kind of turn the time over to David and let him kind of kick things off with discussing his play carrier choice. Sure. Um, so kind of kick things off, like you said, um, got military background. So I was in the Marines for a little bit, 03. Um, anybody that's been part of that world is pretty aware there's a, there's a lot of weight and a lot of gear that you're lugging around. So now that I'm a civilian again, uh, <laughs> I, can, uh, I can be a lot more picky on how I do things, uh, which is a great thing. So... Um, I, as you will see as we go through this, I've, I kind of favor lighter weight, slimmer line. Um, I'm not supported, I'm not in a supported unit anymore. Um, so it kind of, a lot of things change. Um, you're not, you know, roll in in a full squad or platoon or, or bigger, you know, depending on what kind of operation you're on. So um, it's a little more unique scenario. Mm -hmm. And I'm still getting my legs under me as far as that part goes, because most of my training is involving a lot of people. So. Um, we'll start with just the front. <clears throat> I've gone, well, first the carrier. So this is a Cry Precision JPC 2.0. Um, I did opt for the swimmer's cut. I do have swimmer cut plates in here. Um, I prefer that because it does open up the pocket of the shoulder a little bit for your stocks. Um, I find that a lot easier. Sometimes that stock's hitting that plate and it's trying to rotate your gun out and that's really awkward. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do opt for that swimmer's cut a little bit. Um, but on the front, I try to go pretty slick and pretty slim these days. Um, one thing, I tried this out um, back in the day, yeah. um, but I had you know multiple mag pouches stacked. I even had pistol mag pouches on there mm -hmm. and I could put multi-tools and it seems great. Um, but when you start trying to get in the prone and you're, you're doing stuff, you realize pretty quick that you can't get very low anymore. Um, and usually, if I'm getting in the prone, it's, it's a long range precision shot, so having it consistent um, and, and is not gonna like kind of try to cant your body to the mm -hmm. side. The other factor though is that by going slim like this, you can get a lot lower. So if you're trying to hide or get behind cover or something like that, it's a lot easier to do. Um, the bigger this is, the more your torso gets popped up, so your head in particular is sticking up. Yep. Obvious reasons, you don't want that. <laughs> um, so, so fairly slick. Um, I do run three mags here on the front. Uh, this is gonna be kind of my primary tactical reloads, if you will. Um, so I keep, make sure your mags are oriented properly yes. um, for the way you grab things. Everyone grabs different, so mm -hmm. it might not be the same as mine, but I'm right-handed, so left hand for reloads. Mm -hmm. If it's coming from the front, I like to do the finger index on the front, so when you pull it's there, and that allows me to feed into the mag well. Mm -hmm. um, if you grab different, that's fine, but think about that before you put them in your pouches. And be consistent, like, yeah. <laughs> find what works for you and keep doing yeah. it, because if you're not, you're just, Spinning grease wheels at that point. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah, and there's not a right or wrong on that, just right. to clarify. That's just, it's how it works for you. So, so with that, got my three mag pouches, nothing too crazy. Um, very simple, obviously unloaded right now. Um, what mag pouch is this one that you've got here? Uh, so, these are the STAC Kiwi mag pouches, um, which I like. These are the, I believe these are the mids. They're either mids or shorts. Um, which get, leaves a lot more room for purchase with your hand. I've tried the talls. The downside with a standard 30 round mag is usually you only have a little bit sticking out, so it's kind of hard to snag that, yeah. um, get it out quickly, um, especially if you're doing that finger index. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's kind of the primary piece here. I do keep a tourniquet over. Um, can't have too many tourniquets. Right. Um, it's the fastest thing to kill you other than 
actual bullets. So. <laughs> <laughs> Big. And, you're, and I see you're not running zip ties, keeping that. that uh, <laughs> so you're not doing the Russian. Pro, pro tip, don't run zip ties on your tourniquets. <laughs> Bad move. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't end well. Doesn't work well for those guys. No, no, it doesn't. Um, but yeah, so this, this allows it to stay kind of tucked in um, pretty low profile. It's inside the mag pouch, so it's not adding any of that bulk, any of that weight to the front. Um, so it does still allow me to get low. Um, it is kind of set up for that offhand to be able to grab super easy. Obviously, you can reach across and grab it if need be. Um, we'll get into the, a different one later as to why that's the way that is. Um, and then I've always run a knife over here, um, kind of back military side. Uh, my unit did a lot of room clearing type stuff. Um, and so kind of the thought being, if you're coming through a door, if someone's hiding, they grab your muzzle. Obviously, don't want that to happen. But if they do, if you have a sidearm, you can go that route. If you're trying to be quieter, maybe you don't want to, um, or if for some reason you can't get to it, this is kind of a backup option. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that finger loop, you can grab pretty easy. So and what knife's that one there? Uh, so this is a Benchmade Sock P. This one's been beat up a bit. Um, <laughs> but this man, this man uses his knives. <laughs> got a lot of knives. Um, but that being, if someone grabs your muzzle, you can't really engage them anymore. Quick grab from the chest. It's right there. You're coming off higher control, grab it, and you're ready. Mm -hmm. Do what you have to. Um, this is not the nicest of knives. I mean, it works well for what it is, but it's not fancy. So if you need it to pry something or something like that, like it's not a big deal. You can get a replacement for pretty cheap. It's not a, not a problem. Um, so you can use it as a tool too, not just a combat tool, if you will. Um, obviously blood type because never hurts for more knowledge on that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I run a small admin pouch up front. Um, now this stuff is stuff that I might need kind of on the fly. It's obviously not, you know, to stay in the fight, someone's shooting at me. Right. Um, but stuff you don't necessarily want to have to like take a pack off or kit or get right. someone else to grab something, things you need pretty quick. So primarily like batteries um, or, you know, snacks. Because you can never have, <laughs> you never have too much uh, candy on you. You know, always good to have some, it some Starburst in there. That's right. That's rough days, it yeah. helps. <laughs> So I keep, I keep various batteries in here. You got CR123s, double A's, um, CR2032s, um, various optics and lasers, flashlights, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Well, the keep them in here. There's not a ton. Like your night vision and things like that, yeah? Right, right, right. So yeah, anything dies, laser units, flashlights, um, optics, mm -hmm. um, yeah, night vision. You have a quick, um, uh, a, basically a quick reload, if right, you will, for your right. power. Um, and then if, if it's, you get a big lull or you're chilling or something, or you, you take a break on, on a move or something like that, then you pop your pack off, you can reload it with another mm -hmm. resupply or something if you want. Right. Um, the, but yeah, that's kind of the front on mine. I don't know if, do you want to bounce to yours yeah, yeah, and kind of go over your front yeah. and compare, or do you yeah, want to? Yeah. So let's, let's, we'll jump over to mine. Now, my carrier is set up a little bit differently than David's. Um, and this carrier, ironically, is actually I'm gonna get kept, probably catch some flack for this. This was an airsoft uh, <laughs> knockoff of a much more, you know, high-end carrier. The reason I have it is because I got into the plate carrier game during the same time a lot of pe other people did in the civilian world during the old uh, summer of love, the uh, <laughs> summer of riots, and during uh, you know peak COVID season. And if any of you who tried to get into tactical gear during that time remember everything reputable was sold out and basically non-existent at that time. Yeah. So unfortunately during that time frame, you know, I had to start looking at other sources, uh, jumped on eBay, found this uh, Emerson plate carrier, which is a more or less a one for one clone of a Ferro Concepts Slickster, or the, I think their Slickster is what it mm -hmm. is. And so it, I bought it fully with the intention of using it for the time being, you know, in, in the hopes and luckily, fortunately, nothing ever came about where I actually had to use it in like an actual emergency situation. That's always, that's always better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, I got it for that purpose and the plan is, is still to replace it. Um, but what I found actually after a little bit of time and using it in like some just training with the buddies, we were out there doing some stuff out in the desert down here in Southern Utah. Um, as well as then later competing in a tactical games and using it. It actually held up okay. Um, enough so that I kept rolling with it. Um, that being said, it definitely has some stitching issues. Um, you know, I, I actually can sew okay. 
um, this little skill I also learned during COVID when I had nothing else going on. <laughs> so, you hey, it made you well, more well rounded, it right? Did. So it's you know, not it, all bad. It made me good, wasn't it, all it bad. It made me a good uh, home <laughs> homemaker there. <laughs> there so, you, go. you there know, you go. we're play, you know, repairing a couple pop stitches here and there. It has held up okay. I wouldn't necessarily recommend going this route because, you know, if you're just playing airsoft or whatever and all your gear's super lightweight, it's probably a better quality one for that type of stuff. Once you start bumping into the real steel realm where, you know, magazines weigh, what, two pounds a pop, more or less? Um, yeah, generally about a pound fully loaded. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, you know, you start adding weight to the front end of these things, that's where the stitches start to fail you. So, you know, if you're watching this video and you hear, oh, Hunter got an airsoft carrier, don't do that. Just <laughs> save up a little bit more because really the price difference between this and that, when all of a sudden done, is not worth that. Just buy once, cry once. So, um, but that being said. And, and be patient. If you, yeah, for so, a lot of a lot of the higher end stuff, a lot of them are smaller manufacturers, or they're ones that are tied up with a lot of military contracts. Mm -hmm. So they're not they're not able to push a ton to the civilian market. So mm -hmm. um, obviously, this is working for you. Like it's an option if you need to or yeah, you want to yeah. go that route. But if you're trying to do something like this, be patient. I mean, right. I bought mine. I believe it was pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I bought mine pre-COVID from Cry, and I waited I think six or seven months before it actually got delivered. Yeah. Um, and that was without the COVID. Nonsense yeah. um, issue slowing things down. Right, so, right. Yeah, it does take a minute usually. So. It does. And so yeah, guys, you know, it, think mm -hmm. think of this as you know, like anything that's worth getting. Sometimes it's worth waiting for. You know, um, get yourself a good carrier. Invest your time in. If you're going to spend money in this type of equipment, it is designed to save your life. In addition to <laughs> yeah. carry things, yeah. the primary purpose of wearing one of these is to stop bullets. So <laughs> invest in yourself. Invest in your safety. You know. Get quality nylon gear is kind of what I'm trying to make. But anyway, uh, moving kind of past that little, you know, spiel. And so now you kind of know where I'm coming from with this thing. Um, you know, I initially set this thing up, like I said, for because of the worry of potential civil unrest. Mm -hmm. So I set this thing up with a lot more sustainment gear on the front end of it, which... As you can tell by this type of carrier, it is not necessarily designed for that. This is generally a slick carrier um, designed to have, you know, a few mags in a couple things. I've probably overloaded it at this point. So if you're going to go this route, again, mm. a JPC is very scalable. You can bump that thing up and yeah. start adding stuff to the sides. This was a little yeah. harder to do. Um, and to David's credit, as we were kind of look, comparing our stuff before we rolled this video, one of the things I was mentioning I hate about this carrier and just kind of this setup in general, is if you notice from a side profile between these two carriers, obviously, you know, up. I've got my magazines, the, th the same three mags, you know, he's got. And then I've got this nice little admin pouch, which is fine and dandy for if you're just standing up. But as David mentioned, the second you have to do anything dynamic, you have to get, get down on the ground, lay prone, all this extra bulk and mass up front becomes very cumbersome. Um, yes, it does allow me to carry a little bit more administrative type stuff. Mm -hmm. I've got, yep. you know, some batteries, uh, a right in the rain, a pen, a couple pistol right. mags, mm -hmm. uh, a small repair kit in here, you know, firearm repair kit in here. And I love having all that, but all having all of it stacked out in front of the magazines does tend to be pretty cumbersome. Um, I noticed that especially so when I was doing the tactical games where they made mm. us get down on your stomach and crawl under things that were only... <laughs> about 20 inches tall and i'm yeah, a big guy yeah. that became very challenging crawling gets fun <laughs> yeah yeah i was getting hung up on all sorts of stuff um, i'm a bigger dude having all this extra stuff out in front of me just holds me that much further away from the ground it was not helpful in the slightest so again these are things to consider when you're building out your carrier um, yep. you know if you're trying to go slick go slick move you know don't overweigh yourself yep. like i kind of have in this one uh, but if you want to go that full loadout sustainment stuff, cool, that's awesome, do it. Mm -hmm. But start yeah. to consider maybe a better cummerbund system, something that will allow you to move the equipment away from the front mm -hmm. into the sides. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And on that, and on that note too, um, I mean, some of this also depends how you're going to use it, right? Like mm -hmm. kind of what he was touching on. Um, I, I firmly believe there's not one way that's the way to do it, right? right. It, it does depend right. on kind of mission set, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, whatever you choose to do, you should probably try wearing it, even if it's in the house, wear it for kind of an appropriate time frame, doing yes. stuff um, for how you're going to do it, mm -hmm. um, what, what your needs are. Um, that's going to tell you pretty quick 
if you've got some issues somewhere, um, even without having to go to the range first. Yes. Um, yeah. You can start moving stuff around if it's in your way, trying to wash dishes, that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, if you need to fish your phone out of your pocket and it's, you know, everything's blocked, you're probably not going to be able to draw your whole your pistol. Um, the other part, too, is weight. I mean, if it's not holding its weight well, mm -hmm. um, you might not notice it right away. You throw it on immediately and it's like, ah, oh, that's not too bad. I can live with that. Right. Um, but you start wearing that for a couple of hours straight mm -hmm. and you start getting all your wear kind of up in your traps and mm -hmm. you start feeling it weird and spine start starts, hot spots. You, if you points. look yourself in the mirror after a couple hours, you might be kind of standing all cattywampus trying to compensate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not good either. You might just have some straps not adjusted together or whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, and if you're going to be in it a lot, um, they can they can cause uh, like spinal damage and compression. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of spinal compression. Uh, yeah. I shrunk an inch while I was in, so <laughs> got a lot of uh, spinal compression. Um, so not, another reason in. for going light, you know. Yeah. Believe it or not, before he went into the military, he was as tall as I was. Taller. Taller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. Sorry, I have a weird concept there. Distance. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So exactly the, like you said, wear it. You know, mm. you don't have to do anything super crazy, but. You know, like I said, do the dishes, tie your shoes, yeah. move some stuff around your garage, pick up a box. Yeah. Um, you know, again, kind of coming from more of that competitive world where they had us do it, you know, in the tactical games, they had us picking up really big, heavy sandbags. Yeah. Well, that's all, you know, that's awesome. I love, I don't, I don't mind doing that. But again, kind of going back to one of the reasons I really found this setup to be challenging was the second you have to lift anything heavy in front of you, all of this extra stuff that's protruding out in front yeah. of you becomes very annoying because that stuff in the way. gets caught yeah. in the way. Yep. Get the gear, but actually do stuff in it. <laughs> um, don't just buy it, stick it in a corner, and think that it's going to be good to go. Um, you, you really need to kind of actually practice doing things with this equipment. You know, yep. whether that's hopping on a treadmill if you can, just mm -hmm. get some cardio in, do some some stuff. Make sure that those hot spots are are taken care of or adjusted because mm -hmm. you don't want to be discovering these things in a situation where you actually have to <laughs> right. be wearing a flight right. carrier. You geared up because of civil unrest and never wore it, and then civil unrest happens and you can't yeah. breathe. Yeah, exactly. Um, you suddenly realize that you have no cardiovascular <laughs> strength. It happens, yep. guys. You know, that that's fine. But, and that's okay. If you're not there, work towards it. Right. Um, yeah, and carriers will kind of compress the chest cavity a little bit if mm -hmm. one, right? Um, and you can breathe through it and it'll expand, but it's mm -hmm. a lot harder. Um, I know the when, when we got to infantry school, that was like day one before we really even started training, like everyone threw flax on, we went for a run. Mm -hmm. um, and you realize very quickly, this is very different. <laughs> yes. Um, like I could run really well, but that was very different. It felt yeah. like someone was sitting on your chest while you're trying to run. That was oh, kind of yeah. weird. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it takes adapting to and getting mm -hmm. used to for sure. Absolutely. Um, it's not just a given you're going to work with. It, oh, yeah. so. You're, you're going to be yeah. sore in places you didn't realize you would be sore. So just get used to that, be ready for it. Um, you know, kind of moving forward on like, what I have set up. This one, again, I did set mine up, again, for that the concept of potential civil unrest as well as competition type shooting um, as far as like tactical games. So that's why I have a lot more sustainment stuff up here. Mm -hmm. Again, we over went over why I don't love it and I think there's better ways to do it. But as far as what I have going on, I've got my three mags up here, which is, I'm sure in a lot of cases, is kind of like the bare minimum as far as carrying mm -hmm. mags, especially where I don't typically plan on having the support system of a belt. Right, I, which I, which I, my whole thing is built around a belt. So yes, as we will get to that. We'll get to but. that in just a moment. <laughs> and so I could benefit from having a couple more mags on here. I can kind of shove them in the cover, cummerbund here that it is elastic and will hold them, mm -hmm. but only when I'm wearing it. The second I take it off, they all fall out. So yeah. it's obnoxious. Yeah. Um, but you know, up front, I've got two pistol mags uh, in my little admin pouch. I keep it right in the rain. That's more for if I'm out of the range, just. You yeah, know, doing drills, trying to keep score. Take your notes. <laughs> uh, I keep a little loophole lens pen again, just because we're in the desert. It's dusty. Just trying to keep my stuff clean. And in here, it's just a true. little tiny uh, repair kit for my AR. It's got some gun oil, a replacement firing pin, uh, a whole little BCM kit to replace and repair a, uh, a B not replace the BCG, but to repair uh, the bolt carrier group in my rifle oh, okay. if it ever had came to be. Yeah. Uh, and it has the tool, the needed tools in here where I can completely strip down my bolt carrier and rebuild it nice. out in the field. So just a little thing. Um, again, that is not really relevant in the competitive world, but <laughs> again, this thing is set up, you know, it yeah. primarily lives in my truck, places I can get to it fast. If I ever needed it, I hope I never do. Uh, so 
but that's kind of way it's set up. I do have a Baofeng radio on here. I'm fully aware of the limitations of Baofeng and its potential hacking. Yeah. Um, that's more for just when me and the buddies are out set on steel targets, LARPing in the desert, <laughs> trying to be fun, you know, to be no, cool. Wrong so, with that. Um, and then up top, I did actually make my own shoulder pads. Uh, that was one of those things I learned cool. how to do. Um, this carrier sucked without them. It, that raw <laughs> nylon yeah. cutting into the neck. Yeah, a sharp was, edge with nylon. It was the, rough. So was a number on the neck. <laughs> give, give yourself some nice padding on your shoulders. Treat yourself a little bit. You know, whether you make Not them too a wide, though. Yeah, you get not too wide, wide it's going to cut your neck anyway. And yeah. That's obnoxious. Well, and then, it, like you mentioned before, <laughs> it can start to really impede your buttstock placement. True. Um, yeah. So that stuff to also consider is, as you're setting this up. I have, I'm a right-handed shooter, so I've got my PTT on my left side. That way it doesn't interfere with my buttstock. You know, depend whatever you're planning on putting on your thing. Again, yeah. just use it. Figure mm -hmm. out the the kinks. Um, yeah, and that's. Uh, I guess we can just move on to the back. Sure. Um, so we'll let David go ahead and take over. Yeah, I keep mine again very simple and lightweight because my back hurts all the time. Um, so <laughs> the problem. Um, so this is actually Cry's. They make a this backpack kind of system for this carrier. Um, so it does actually zip in, but it's also mollied in underneath, um, which is kind of interesting. You do have to play with a little bit if you're using the swimmer's cut, I found. Um, it's designed for the JPC 2.0, but they don't have a swimmer's cut specific, at least when I bought it. Mm. Um, so it is a little bit compressed from where you would okay. put it on the molly, mm -hmm. but, but it does work. It works great. Um, never had it start to try to work loose or anything weird. Um, my primary concern for having something like this on the back is for a bladder. So if I'm not running mm -hmm. a backpack, mm -hmm. I can throw a water bladder in here, mm -hmm. and then I have water. We're in the that's desert; awesome. it gets really hot. Does, um, does get very water's hot. important to have. Yes. Um, so that's really the main purpose for that. Now, if we have, I don't know, things things got really weird. We found flashbangs or grenades or something. I could throw them in here, and then anyone that I'm with can pull them out as mm -hmm. as you need them, um, or any kind of other gear that you don't need rapidly. Right? You could a, you a could rain pull, jacket or something. Right? You could throw awesome. that in there, have someone else grab it for you. That we don't have to take the whole flak off. The big thing is, I see a lot of, in even the Marines, I saw a lot of people do this. They they would put kind of a, a bladder pack on the back. Mm -hmm. They'd have their bladder in there, but then they'd throw like all of their batteries in there. Oh, that's problematic. Right. Yeah. And, and it's like, oh, I got all my batteries and I don't have to have my backpack. Well, that's cool. But yeah, the moment they need them, it's, oh, I got to take my flak off. Right. Uh, you might be in a spot where you can't take your flak off. So right, that's right. not good. Um, or you need someone to help you, but mm -hmm. you know they might be holding security somewhere, so they right. might not be able to really drop that to help you with that. So, right. yeah, things to think about: things that you need quick. Make sure you can reach it. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's it's an important factor. Um, but yeah, so I, I I would never plan on putting a ton of stuff in here, mm -hmm. other than maybe a bladder. The other nice thing is it does compress yeah. completely flat. So if I need to throw a pack on, it's not adding a bunch of weird bulkiness or awkwardness mm -hmm. uh, when you do that. So if you had to jump in like a truck or something, you could still do so. Correct. Yeah. The other nice thing with this one, because I have never I've never found myself wishing I had less ammo. Yeah, seems weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so never wish I had less ammo. My problem doing research and trying to get this ready, and even my old plate carrier that I had, my big problem was trying to figure out how to get mags. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the, the standard for civilians is have three plus one in the gun, right. which makes sense, and realistically, are you gonna need more than that as a civilian? Probably not. Yeah. You're pro things have gone really far south. Yeah, if you, really if far you go south. through that many, I mean, if you go through <laughs> yeah. a mag as a civilian, right. it's shocking. But yeah, if that's, you're going through four. That's a bad day. Something but, just happened. <laughs> yes, but, contingencies. Right. Um, so this pack actually comes with a dual mag pouch built into That's the back. That's awesome. Uh, so it hangs just below the plate bag. It is like hardened, so you do have retention in here even without the straps. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like a Kiwi, but not quite. Okay. Um, but it also has the bungee straps, which I use for this just because yeah, you might get snagged on a seatbelt or something and get pulled out, whatever. Right. Um, with this, yes, I can reach, even just normally shooting, I can reach behind my left hand and get an easy reload with it. It's not mm -hmm. too bad. Um, this one being on my right side, probably not going to be doing that as a righty. Right. But if there's a lull, you can you can whip that thing out, use Start it to, use it to replace yeah one of the front ones or your mm -hmm. speed reload spot, um, which you get into the belt. Um, do something like that. Or the other thing that I've thought of, um, civil unrest. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that the cops aren't trying. Mm -hmm. Right? They they might they might not. I, depends on scenario. Right. But if cops are out there trying. They probably don't need, you know, all of us out there trying to do their jobs for them. 
Right. There might be spots where that's helpful, mm -hmm. but maybe not. Right. Um, so even just having extras, if I need to loan it, um, mm -hmm. it might be to you know an officer like that's dealing with something or hey, maybe I'm out there and my neighbor comes out of the house, we're trying to lock the neighborhood down mm -hmm. and he only has one mag or something, I can, you know, I've got mags to give. Like, right. There's more than just having it for you. Mm -hmm. um, and at about a pound a piece, it's not the end of the world. Um, right. Having everything else light, it does make that easier. Sure. Uh, makes that a little bit more doable. Um, but yeah, and then pretty much everything else, I know people are gonna freak out because there's no med kit on here. Yeah. Well, you go, what in the world are you doing? There's no med kit. <laughs> what if, what if, you got a tourniquet. I've got, got a tourniquet on here. You got a tourniquet and you have Starburst. You don't need And Starburst, else. right. Um, you keep morale alive, you will not, you will mentally I, never I, die. That's I can right. personally <laughs> vouch that this man has sustained himself on 30 days with nothing but Starburst and Snicker bars. <laughs> That's so right. he'll be fine. The staples in a healthy diet. <laughs> that, that with coffee and you're set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of the back, super slick. Um, it does have a zipper pocket on top. I don't know if I showed that. So it does have a zipper pocket if you need something small. Um, okay. If I was gonna put batteries back here, that's where I'd do it. Mm -hmm. That way they're not fishing through this giant pocket right. if someone else has to grab it for me. Right. Um, just makes it easier. Um, if you have a small tool or something like that you need to put in. Right. Makes it a heck of a lot easier than digging through a giant open right. it's space. Right, just open sack. Kind of yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this does have the grab handle on the back, mm, which if you fun. need to get drugged by somebody, that's nice. So. Yes, absolutely. Um, hopefully not. Right. But yeah, hopefully <laughs> but, that's never But if you do, yeah, it's <laughs> nice to have. <laughs> yeah. The back of my pouch is very slick. Uh, as you can see, it's just got, you know, a pouch just to kind of help with my uh, radio antenna, cable management. And really, that's about it. Um, <laughs> the, the reason I did that, again, um, I didn't want to overload this carrier. Wasn't, I'm not confident it's going to be able to handle you know a few extra pounds on the back from like a bladder or something like that. Mm. I have in the past, gotcha. if I really want to have water, um, I'll just put a camel. I have a really small lightweight camel back. I'll throw yeah. on over top of this, yeah. um, which allows me to take it off. I keep snacks, you know, a jacket or whatever. I can yeah. get to it a little easier without having to mm -hmm. take my carrier off. Um, and we had again, guys that preferred that. Yeah, yeah. Like we had Molly on pack, packs for the bladders, mm -hmm. but we also had just the Camelbacks and some of the guys, they opted just to throw a camel back over. You know, it's, yeah. it's up to you. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Again, much. it's not right or wrong. Exactly, right. yeah. <laughs> and it, it's kind of nice because, you know, like I said, I can take it off by myself. I can get to my stuff without having to worry about my carrier. Downside is it does start adding a lot of bulk in here. Mm -hmm. You know, there starts, it can cause some, some weird angles when I'm trying mm -hmm. to shoulder my rifle. So, again, if you're going to do that, and your Practice sling, your sling can get caught on straps. It it's, does. There, there's other off, uh, variables that can happen. Yes, and, and that's all stuff you start to. That's all stuff you start to quickly realize as you are, you know, training with it. Yeah. Is like, hey, there's mm -hmm. awkward stuff you would have never considered <laughs> until you actually get out there and start doing stuff. So keep that I, in mind. I think I changed my bladder hose mm -hmm. routing on my in the Marine probably six times before, like our first like big training exercise yeah, yeah, yeah just little stuff around like the camp you're like oh my god that's terrible yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, let's and change that and you're never gonna know like again i'm talking from a civilian level but even then like when i've been out there hanging out with the buddies you'll never realize like at the weirdest times you realize how unideal certain things can be yeah. set up where you're just like oh on paper it's awesome yeah yeah <laughs> and then the second you're crouched Executed behind a, a pallet or something <laughs> trying to do a drill and you try to shoulder up the rifle you're like wait a mm -hmm. second this is not going to work so yep. find out what works for you and what doesn't get yep. out there put some get some dirt on this stuff you know it's going to work out really well for you um but the other thing i have on my pack that i really like um is i have the Faro concepts um man i can't it's called the roll if i'm not mistaken it this is my ifac back here oh gotcha. which i okay. really like because yep. it sits right there in the small of my back uh, i used to keep my ifac on my belt um, but because i wanted to have this <laughs> just be like a one and done system i could throw it in the back of my truck with my rifle grab it and go if i need to i wanted to have everything on it um, and i was kind of trying to prioritize the the rifle as my main thing um, i figure if i have a plate carrier on a pistol is probably not going to be the thing i'm going to want to have so i've got yep. this is set up more as a rifle setup mm -hmm. at the moment but this, this thing is awesome. Um, it is so low profile. It barely mm -hmm. sticks out past the width of the plate itself. And that yeah, just I mean, Velcro's up in there. It's up. probably sticking out about as much as the mag pouches are in mine. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. not much. Very, <laughs> very nice. And in here, you know, I've got my full blowout kit, everything I would need to potentially stop a bullet hole. Um, you know, get training on that kind of equipment as well, guys, yeah. especially, you know, civilian levels. 
you have to kind of go out of your way, get, go that extra steps, get training on the stuff. a lot harder as a civilian. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, and for a long time, doable. I would just, yeah, it is doable. Harder. Yeah. It is. There's great guys like the Tactical Cowboy guys who oh, yeah. teach you how to do that. They've done that here for us. Yeah. And I think great they're doing, classes. Uh, doing another one up in November. So, I thought so. you know, special plug. <laughs> but uh, get that. And, you know, for a long time, I had it on there where maybe I'm not the pro in the room. Um, to, to help somebody, but if I have the, the, the gear on me, the medical equipment, and there's somebody else who knows what they're doing, like David's there, I'm probably just gonna hand my gear off to him, be like, here, work <laughs> on this guy. Um, yeah, and you know, some of that's SOP, some of that's situation, right? Military, right. your IFAC's really for you, but you've yeah. also got dedicated medics, yeah. whether it's corpsmen or, or medics or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. You got, that's their job. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So you can patch something quick, you know, while you're waiting if need be. That's why you right. keep a bunch of tourniquets readily available and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But which but your IFAC is for them to use on you. Right. right. Um, now, again, not supported, which that's all supported. Right. You might be by yourself. Mm -hmm. Um I know there's um Marine, if I remember correct, but he was doing security for the the news crew during one of those riots. Mm -hmm. Um Portland, I think. Um and he yeah. basically had a his handgun, but I mean that was a whole mob of people and him. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Like there's there is no support, so mm -hmm. you need to be able to reach it. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, you need to, be able to use it for you. But it's in that case, like you probably want some stuff for other people too. Right. Um, right. Just a reality. But yeah, and you know this stuff is all being set up. You know, it, that does. I don't want to sound doom and gloomy, but <laughs> right. The idea, obviously, a plate yeah. carrier. The intention is you know to stop bullet holes. Yep. Patch bullet holes, make mm -hmm. bullet holes. Kind right. of the three, the three concepts behind right. them. Right. So, you know, having, you know, what you have figured out to be good for you, having it ready, knowing mm -hmm. how to use it, uh, become comfortable in it is going to be hugely advantageous. Um, and just kind of spend some time really thinking, think, thinking through, which I think is going to be the biggest takeaway, hopefully, from the video today. Yeah. That, you know, we can help you figure this stuff out, but ultimately it's gonna come down to you yeah. actually getting out there and doing stuff in it. Yeah. Um, you know, practicing in appropriate spaces, figuring out how it works. Um, it's gonna be hugely advantageous for you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's kind of more or less my carrier. Um, the only other thing I forgot to mention, I do have a tourniquet right here up on the front. It's yep. just a really low profile thing. It's Easy there, I can- both sides. Yep, I yep. get to it both sides. I wouldn't mind having more than one on here. I think it probably would be a good idea to have two. Yeah. But I think that'll be something I'll do on a later carrier when I have a little bit more right. weight. Uh, yeah. For this one, it is it is what it is for now. Again, don't, again guys, just do it right. You get yourself a good one. <laughs> uh, no, I did want, because you got your belt here. I want right. you to yeah. explain, because mine was set up as kind of a, like a one and done thing. Mm -hmm. it, mentally, that's kind of my idea, but you've got a little bit different mentality behind it. And I really like yeah. it. Yeah. So, so explain where you're going with this. Yeah, so to me, my thought process on all of this, right, it, especially civilian environment, if I'm throwing a carrier on, mm -hmm. um, we've we've gone pretty overt, right? You're, yes. you're not you're not being secretive anymore, so I don't need to worry about you know having a concealed carry. Mm -hmm. um, that's not really a factor at that point. Um, with that, that means I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a belt on. Yeah. Um, so I would never really use this without a belt. Now I, I it is possible I would use a belt without my carrier. Mm -hmm. That's that's a possibility, but I wouldn't go the other way. Um, if this is on, it, things are serious, um, and I'm not hiding anymore, so belt it is. Right. Um, now with that, <clears throat> that is why there's no med kit on this. Um, I have my med kit on my belt, the reason being, like I said, I might have my belt on without my carrier, but mm -hmm. I will never have my carrier without my belt. Um, so with that, that means I always, if we start getting to this level, I've always got my med kit on me. Mm -hmm. um, so even if we were in this for a bit, Things have settled down a little bit, but mm -hmm. we're gonna we're still kind of hanging out, making sure nothing re-escalates. I can pop this off and set it down and cruise, but I've still got med med on. Mm -hmm. I've still got my handgun with mags. That's why there's no pistol mags on this. Mm -hmm. um, and then I could still sling up a rifle and have one spare mag. Right. Um, now this mag I use as my speed reload. Um, just kind of more natural. Mm -hmm. um, if it's quick, fast, in a hurry, my natural response is go to my belt. Mm -hmm. So this is where my rifle speed reload is, not up here. Um, obviously, you'd use that if you had to, if mm -hmm. you were burn that or, or whatever. Um, but that's why I run one on my belt. Um, I don't really see much reason for more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why we roll it that way. Yeah. You will also, think, I don't know if you can tell, if you do this a lot, you probably know where I'm going with this, but it is facing the opposite direction than my other mags. And that is for a reason. So, like we said, pay attention to how you're loading them. 
my general loading method is finger on front to index. Mm -hmm. When I start getting to the back, that is a very awkward way for my wrist to try to bend, mm -hmm. and it's not natural. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not thinking about it to do it that way, when I start getting this far back, uh, I won't do it. Mm -hmm. And so I've spun this around, and I actually go beer can grip on speed reloads for that reason. So mm -hmm. when it's back here, I come back, grab, and then obviously that's not going to move because it's attached to me. But then that comes out, and then you're ready for a reload. Mm -hmm. um, that is the reason it's backwards from the others. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing, you just got to think about it or try it. Right. Um, I, I used to have it the other way when I first started putting this stuff together because mm -hmm. um, that's how I always did it. Mm -hmm. And then I started to realize that when the clock started or things got crazy, you had a bunch of things to think about, mm -hmm. I'd always forget. And then my mag backwards, yep, that's how I learned. Um, but that's the way that is that path, way. Path less right. resistance at that point. Just that's right. Easier. Just do what's natural instead of retraining yourself. Yep. Um, obviously holster, it works with my carry gun. This mm -hmm. one does. Um, this is a Safari Land QLS system though. So you can actually pop these off. So you get holsters for different guns. Don't have to rebuild your whole kit or belt right. or anything. Um, that is super convenient because most of us have multiple guns that we might use. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've got other ones for other stuff, but this one fits my carry gun. That way, if I wanted to throw it like in a vehicle or something, because you know it might be sitting in the car ready, so you can just pop your concealed, drop it in real fast. You're right. not redoing gear. A lot um, lower profile that way, not, not right. nearly as much bulk on your upper half. Right. Yeah. And the other part, like that's kind of stuff's going on. Um, if it's war serious, like you know stuff's happening, but you don't know you're needed. You might have your belt on, normal shirt up top, mm -hmm. no carrier yet, mm -hmm. but in the car. Um, you might have your rifle and carrier in the seat, mm -hmm. but you don't want people to see you driving around with your carry on. Right. Going, Right. Ooh, that's weird. And then right. just pop one through the Lumbo window before you know they're in that uh, instance. No, they're next to you. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you look a little more normal, uh, but you've already got that on. So right. that'd be kind of cool. Um, Absolutely. I then also run a dump pouch because it never hurts to have a dump pouch. And who? So this is, is a, this, this is a blue force gear. I've got that. I on. love this dump pouch mm -hmm. because it's actually pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty large. You can fit a fair amount of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, you do have the option to cinch it closed, mm -hmm. so stuff won't spill out. Um, and this has proven to be a very durable, it's very thin, but it's yes. very, very durable. Um, I've had some pretty sharp stuff in there and nothing's ever tried to poke mm -hmm. through. That's I've nice. got the same one I can vouch for that. It's yeah. awesome. We've, and it I, takes up no space. Yes. Very low Which is awesome. <laughs> no takes up no there. space when you're not using it, um, yeah. which is a huge deal to me. Um, you will notice everything's kind of shifted to the sides, which for a lot of people, we're not going to do that very neatly right That's now. Um, but for a lot of people, you'll see you'll see pistol pouches that come all the way to the front. I don't like that for the same reason that I keep this slick. Mm -hmm. um, if you have stuff up on the front, when you get in the prone, it'll start pushing you. And especially like this, because you typically put mags on one side, mm -hmm. not on both. Mm -hmm. So then when you get in the prone, it's not consistent. So you have mm -hmm. something pushing up this hip and nothing on the bottom. And then you get all skewed right. over and right. it's awkward. You wear your back out trying to stay flat or right. it kicks you over somewhere weird. Mm -hmm. um, so that really sucks. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's why that stays back. It's pretty open in the front. Mm -hmm. um, not a big deal there. And what what pouches are you running on your belt? Your uh, so the, so, so these are kiwis. Are yeah. So these are kiwis as well. Go ahead and show um, that to me. I'm I'm a sucker for some kiwis. Um, I, I actually had tacos for a while in the mm -hmm. Marines, which some people didn't like. Um, and they were okay. Yeah. Um, but I. And I got over them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just, they started like falling out and stuff. Once that bungee starts getting a little bit weak, yep. you get any pressure on there, it'll rip them out. And right. I that's that's to, where I had I'm to make that mine. adjustment. That wasn't good. <laughs> so you don't want that. Um, and then what's the base belt here? Uh, so this is a Ronin, a Ronin Tactics, um, two lamb over there making a freaking awesome, awesome belt setup. I know a lot of other people doing stuff similar these days, mm -hmm. but he was the first one that I saw with it. And, you know, he's done a lot of crazy stuff and yeah. I want to support them. So yeah. there you go. Um, <laughs> there, there are similar things that are less expensive, but um, his are within the ballpark. And like I said, I mean, right. it's, cool it's hard to argue his track record. And yeah, he's a, he's a super cool guy from everything I've seen and heard and people have met him. So mm -hmm. I want to support him. Absolutely. Um, on the back is my med kit, like we've talked about. I'm not going to rip it open and look at everything in there. Um, this is also a Blue Force gear. It's their micro trauma kit now, if I remember correct. Mm -hmm. Um, it does allow you to pull from both sides. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so it's got an internal kind of unit that's wadded up, that's holding everything. Mm -hmm. And it's got a little bit of Velcro on the back. So you have tabs you can grab from either side to pull it. Right. But it keeps it kind of secured in there until you want it. But you can pull either way. So if you're, you know, one arm's injured or something, you can still grab mm -hmm. from the other side. 
And then I also mount another tourniquet underneath, um, which these are, my tourniquet holders, by the way, are from T-Rex. Um, super simple, Yep. nothing crazy. I mean, it's, yep, it's that's literally right. like double-sided Velcro. Yeah, that's exactly what I have. And elastic, like it's nothing, it's nothing fancy, mm -hmm. but it works really well. Yeah. And that's really, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what matters. So yeah, so that thing's awesome. Um, allows me to keep another tourniquet. And if I don't have my carrier on, I've got one. Mm -hmm. um, being tucked under there, you don't feel it or notice it at all. Right. Um, and then the flip side is I always have a tourniquet on me mm -hmm. every day. So this is already a secondary. Um, right. So then that's a tertiary. Um, and then if things are really weird, you got a backpack, you can throw more in there or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, can't have too many tourniquets. Uh, <laughs> oh, <I> can't. <laughs> can't have too many. Um, What's it like the rule is like one per limb or something like that? Yeah, yeah, them. at least. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So. Which is where you can see mine severely lacking. I have the one and I don't have a belt system. Well, yeah. not in configuration generally with this. So that's where yeah. like mine needs to probably step it up a bit is having a little bit more med, medical stuff, I think. But eh, I mean, it obviously never hurts. Yeah. Meds. I mean, the med's important. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned you had a boo-boo kit. Oh, I do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I wanted to touch that. on that real quick because I meant to say it earlier and I forgot. Yeah. Um, so mine is very much like like bad things like happened. blowout kit, like mm -hmm. stuff's gone gone real real bad, mm -hmm. and we need something to stop it. The reason being, I don't have any boo boo kits or like neosporin or like mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, frankly, if I'm out in this and I'm bleeding, I don't care if blood gets on stuff, yeah. like I don't. That part is a non-issue. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the purpose of a Band-Aid. Um, sure. Unless you're gonna be out in the woods for a long time, in which case it can help with infection, right? right. Neosporin, infection stuff. Uh, we live in a city. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I have a hospital that I can I can get to in like five minutes. Yes. Um, oh, and ambulances that run. So mm -hmm. my concern is stuff that's gonna take me out before an ambulance can get to me. Right. Because that's a real scenario. Mm -hmm. um, military side, you know, you might you might not be able to get a med vac at right. all, and if right. you do, it might be quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, things like infection and that kind of stuff are a big deal. Right. Um, but they are. Uh, I've had some medical training, mm -hmm. um, just as kind of the nature of the beast mm -hmm. being in, but um, the EMTs are much more capable than <laughs> I am, as well as the uh, the doctors over there and the nurses. So, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I'll do the bare minimum that I need to to get there, um, right. and then let them do what they're paid for. Um, right, <laughs> right. Uh, that's the reason I don't have any boo boo kit stuff. There's yeah. stuff in my truck, but yeah, um, I find that I use that usually when I'm at work and I'm bleeding and I can't get it everywhere, yeah. so I have to run to my truck. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got mine more just like you said, the more for like the inconvenient things where it's like, oh damn, I cut my finger with, you know, just doing something dumb out in the desert. It's like not an emergency, but like yeah. I just don't want to bleed on my stuff while yeah. I'm out there. Yeah, so. It, it, and it's it's literally just a little. Pop, and I understand why here. people don't want to bleed on their stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I like, just I yeah. feel like it's not a real day unless I bleed, which is most days. <laughs> Usually something minor and stupid, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I've gotten to the point I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So that's kind of how we mm -hmm. have ours configured. They're yeah. two very different systems, but the mm -hmm. thing that I think that is kind of the takeaway, and I, at least I hope is the takeaway from the video today, is that regardless of how you choose to set it up, you yeah. actually put some thought and effort <laughs> into it and yeah. you know, get out there and then kind of train in it or you know, just move in it, do something so you have an well, idea yeah. of what you're getting into. And like I said, even if it's like doing dishes, yeah, right? Yeah. Like walking around your house doing dishes, yeah, yeah your, mom, your wife or significant other might think that's weird, but a, it's okay. you'll still learn a, a lot, well, um, and it's, it takes a lot less time and a lot less inconvenience mm -hmm. to do that, to figure out kind of the gross issues with what's going on mm -hmm. um, and fix those there without having to go to the range, find out you got this horrendous issue you need to fix right. and you got to stop or come home to fix it right. before you can go back. Figure out the big stuff back there, you'll, you'll notice quick. Right. Um, and then you can fine tune when you go to the range mm -hmm. and stuff and it's not as big a deal. Right, and, and that's actually, I'm glad you brought the fine tuning thing. I suspect, and I haven't asked you this question, but based off my own personal <laughs> experience with my carrier, I suspect you didn't put that together in one day and it was perfect the first time you put it together. No. Like, <laughs> probably, I have quite a few admin pouches and mag pouches and 
tourniquet mm -hmm. pouches and mm -hmm. other things laying in bins that I'm not using anymore. Um, I also have there. a completely different carrier mm. that I don't use anymore. <laughs> yeah. so, so, it just sits in my closet. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, if you have questions, again, we both come from different backgrounds and there are many of the guys on the showroom here at Modern Warriors who can help answer questions, who come from various different backgrounds and come, have different experience levels as far as like what kind of kit they've used. Mm -hmm. And they can help you kind of answer any questions you may have. We hope to, you know, even though necessarily, we don't necessarily carry this nylon equipment here, we yep. still hope that we can become kind of that one-stop shop for you. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we're very active on social media, you know, mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, we're on Twitter, uh, Thread, YouTube especially. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always stop by the shop, give us a call, yep. um, you know, subscribe to the channel, send us messages, however you want to. We will take that time and actually answer those questions for you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah, is there anything you wanted to add before we kind of you know wrap it up? Um, you, add? I'm not so sure. Um, I think we've kind of ripped through. I don't have that much junk on here, so it yeah. makes it easy. But um, I do. <laughs> I do. I do want to reiterate, though, there is not a right or wrong way to do it. Um, mine is not correct. His is not correct. Um, mine might be better for certain things. His better for others. Mm -hmm. um, and you know. Everyone's got their own limitations. Like right. I said, I've got a lot of back problems. I've got tons of arthritis, all sorts of stuff. Um, my amount of movement mm -hmm. might be much more limited than some. Like that's that's one of my factors for not running side plates. Mm -hmm. um, it limits my movement so much that I almost feel like I'm, I'm an easier safe. target. Right. Um, I have more protection, but I can't move, so mm -hmm. I'm a sitting duck. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it's little things like that. Everyone's different. Your scenario is different. Mm -hmm. um, Someone comes at you and he goes, well, you did that, so that's that's wrong. I'm like, they probably don't know what they're doing or talking about. <laughs> 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 yeah. If it works for you, that, that's what matters. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah make, make sure the plates are sized for you and just start working on it. You'll, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, if you guys have, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to help you out any way we can. And uh, until next week, God bless. Take care.